You're watching CW Montana. This is the MTN 9 o'clock news. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Russ Reisinger. It is no April Fool's joke. Tonight, top authorities across Billings and Yellowstone County laying down the law about staying at home. Do not, do not violate these orders. Take them very, very seriously. A strong reminder to follow recent orders from the county and the governor saying the failure to follow could be catastrophic to our community and state and punishable if you don't voluntarily comply. Well, the number of cases in Montana is also growing more by the day, now more than 200. There are now 217 confirmed cases in the state. Total deaths remain at five tonight. Since Governor Bullock issued that stay at home order, la order last week, most Montanans have been doing their best to follow it, but not everyone and a lot of people still have questions about it. Today, a news conference at Riverstone Health answered some of those questions and also made it very clear that that order will be enforced. The governor's order requires that gatherings be both essential and limited in size. The governor's order is not an either or, it's a both and. And I think that's been some confusion. So we've had some folks say, you know, it's a small group, isn't it okay? It's gotta be essential and it's gotta be limited in size. Our preferences is for voluntary compliance, uh, education, if you have contact with law enforcement, and then after repeated or very egregious or blatant violations, uh, then we will work closely with the county attorney's office and the public health department to issue citations and or arrest at their directive. Uh, this disease is now killing our Montanans. It's wrecking our economy. It's damaging this town that I grew up in, the state that I love. Said that people can be fined for every day that they're in violation of that order and could even face jail time. Something else that came out of that news conference, health officials say we aren't even expected to reach our peak of the outbreak here in Montana until the end of this month. The cost of failure to follow these guidelines is catastrophic. This isn't just a, oops, we didn't do it. This is catastrophic. It's the, the cost of failure is almost unimaginable. Felton adding that nobody wants to see people get arrested, but he says it is essential that people take this seriously and follow that order. If you have questions about the order after reviewing it online, you can call the county attorney's office. Uh, violations can be reported to the public health office. That number is 651-6415. Well, according to a model used by the Trump administration, that spike won't be ending anytime soon. In fact, we could be dealing with the implications of coronavirus for months to come. And according to the model we just talked about, we'll see our peak on April 25th with approximately nine deaths a day here in Montana. By June, those death totals in Montana are expected to reach 270 before leveling out. These projections come from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation at the University of Washington. Now they assume that strong social distancing measures remain in place to protect against the spread of the disease. At this time, Montana will have enough hospital beds, but be short of ICU beds. It also expects 100 ventilators will be needed statewide. Again, these are projections that are used by the White House Coronavirus Task Force. Well, 73 Montana Army and Air National Guard men and women have been activated for state active duty because of the coronavirus crisis. Those soldiers and airmen will be used in 11 cities and 17 locations across Montana to screen people arriving from other states and countries at our airports and train stations, and that is set to begin on Friday. Well, today, Governor Bullock issued another directive to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in state correctional facilities. This directive suspends new transfers into the Departments of Corrections custody, except when authorized by the director. If transfers are authorized, those new inmates will need to be quarantined for 14 days. The directive also includes several measures to be implemented by the Department of Corrections, including screening anyone who arrives at the facility and restricting all in-person visitation. The Board of Pardons and Parole will also consider early release for some nonviolent criminals. Well, with rent due today for thousands of Montanans, there are still questions surrounding Governor Bullock's directive allowing payments to be late. That order came down yesterday, instructing landlords to give renters extra time as the coronavirus impacts the economy and people are out of work. 
but it doesn't mean renters won't eventually have to pay their April rent. Those with the Department of Commerce say it instead allows time to figure out the next step. Basically, you know, it relieves some of the pressure off of folks to know that right in the middle of this, this emergency, you know, they're not going to be displaced from their homes. Um, it does not forgive their rent or their mortgage or any of their payments. It really just gives them a, a little bit of breathing room to figure out what they can and what they need to do. Well, renters have time to figure out those details. Landlords and property owners are also getting some extra time. Those with Montana Housing encourage buyers to talk with their lenders. Hotels are essential service under the governor's directive, but have been impacted because of the stay-at-home directive. The Northern Hotel downtown Billings has seen a decrease. It started with the cancellation of basketball tournaments. Now with the governor's directive, business has dropped even more. Northern President Mike Nelson says his crew is doing even more cleaning. Rooms have been left vacant for at least three days before renting them out again. Nelson says he's ready to help. It seems like it's slowed us down a little bit more. I think every communication that comes from the governor's office that is meant to shelter us in place or quarantine us, it talks the next traveler out of coming to Montana. Now, I don't want to sound like I'm complaining. That's really not too bad. We're eager to do our part to help solve this crisis. Mike Nelson says the two restaurants at the Northern, Tan and Bernie's, are open for takeout orders. Well, the coronavirus outbreak is affecting almost all aspects of the economy, and now it's upending the political world in one of the biggest elections that Montana has seen in many years. MTN chief political reporter Mike Dennison tells us how the virus has changed the 2020 campaign landscape in Montana. A month ago, candidates for statewide office prepared for the home stretch to the June 2nd election in several hotly contested primaries. Now, everything has changed. I only know one way to campaign, and that is to get in front of people and try to you know, talk to people and have debates. All of the debates have been canceled. It's difficult on every front because uh, what used to exist, even in terms of being able to communicate, has all changed. Coronavirus restrictions mean no local party dinners or forums, no one-on-one -on -one meetings with voters, no in-person fundraisers, and just plain difficult to raise any money. So what are candidates doing? They say they're still contacting voters and supporters, but often to offer help in this time of trouble. I'm spending a lot of time talking with Montanans, um, making sure they're okay and seeing what questions they have. Um, trying to serve as a resource to them. The, the amount of fear and um, lack of resources I'm seeing for people in my district is, it, I mean, just has to be answered with something. Williams and Winter say they hope their actions show voters how they'd act if elected. Candidates also are pinning hopes on telephone and email contacts by campaign workers. The best kind of campaigning in Montana is uh, the word of mouth of good people who spread the word about people they believe in, candidates they believe in. And uh, so um, I'm fortunate to have uh, volunteers and supporters that are on fire. Candidates who are office holders say the coronavirus crisis has consumed their work time, like Insurance Commissioner Matt Rosendale, who's one of six Republicans running for Montana's open U.S. House seat. He hopes his work to ensure people have access to health care is advertisement enough to support him. I, I am thoroughly convinced that as long as I do a good job at the office that the people of Montana elected me for, that they will continue to give me the support that they have previously and, and push me forward as the uh, nominee for the United States Congress. But of course, it doesn't hurt to have money and name ID. And Montana State University political scientist David Parker says candidates with cash can take to the airwaves and the digital ad landscape like they've always done. But he also says there's an X factor that lesser known candidates could take advantage of. We're all trapped in our homes. We're all in front of our devices all the time. If anything, we, the audience is far more captive now than you might even have in an other campaign. That aspect, and a likely all-male ballot, is something that Republican House candidate Joe Dooling hopes can work to his advantage. Uh, folks have more time to research candidates, and they have a little bit more time on their hands. And so we're of the belief that voters are going to research the candidates a little bit more than just going in the booth and voting for a name they recognize. Could that be? Or are the better funded and better known candidates even more advantaged in these troubled times? Voters start rendering their verdict in just five short weeks when those mail-in ballots go out. At the Capitol, Mike Dennison, 
MTN News. And MTN News will be bringing you more coverage of many of the contested statewide primary elections in the coming weeks. One of the top producers in the world of Bakken oil filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection today. Whiting Petroleum, based in Denver, has been a major player on the Montana oil scene for more than 30 years. It's a sudden demise, perhaps a hint of things to come for the beleaguered shale oil industry. Ellen Olson with the Montana Petroleum Association told MTN News today that small oil and gas producers all across the state are shutting in their wells, meaning the pumps have been turned off. Olson estimated that more than 1,000 Montanans will have been shut in. Uh, uh, Montana wells will have been shut in across Rosebud, Tool Glacier, and Muscle Shell counties. Olson described Whiting Petroleum as a good company, a good corporate neighbor who will be missed. Well, in response to people who say they are being denied coronavirus testing, a computer programmer and former member of the Montana legislature created a website where they can share their stories. UntestedMontana.com was launched Friday and UntestedWyoming.com was launched yesterday. Both websites were created as a place where residents of both states can share information on their symptoms after being turned away from testing. Once collected, that information will be given to the governor's offices and state COVID-19 task forces to use it however they see fit. We can make sure folks' stories are heard. I'm sure uh, many are seeing on Facebook right now from friends and family who cannot get tested. Um, and we're just trying to give those folks agency and make sure the government and the authorities have that data. He also mentioned all fields on the website are voluntary, and as soon as that information is handed over to the state, it will be completely wiped from his database. Again, those websites are untestedmontana.com and untestedwyoming.com. Well, uh, in this time of social distancing and isolation has uh, made it lonely for uh, many people, especially seniors. So the Billings Public Library is launching SOS Mail or Send Our Seniors Mail. You can make a card, draw a picture, write a letter, send it to a local senior living facility. Uh, since that uh, library is temporarily closed, this is a program you can do uh, from home through April 30th. And a full list of facilities and addresses can be found in this story on our website, ktvq.com. All right, still to come on tonight's 9 o'clock news, water woes. A look inside a local water district as they respond to calls about the safety of drinking water 